So you want to play Borderlands 1 Enhanced Edition, eh? So the first thing I'm going to begin with here is just going to be telling you why you should play Borderlands 1 in 2024. So first things first, if you have not noticed here, uh, we are starting as a hunter here. We have the sniper rifle here. We are playing on the Enhanced Edition of the Borderlands 1. Came out around Borderlands 3 time. We are also using uh, a little bit of a shader from the Nexus Mod Center. That's all we're using mod wise is a shader to make our game look just a little bit more up to date. The Enhanced Edition did do a lot to the graphics, but one of the lacking things in the entire game was the shaders aspect. Uh, just the lighting a lot more. The colors are better looking now. It does seem a little dark with the shader I have chosen. I have thought about changing shaders because this one seems a little bit too dark for me in certain environments. Maybe I can adjust my game with gamma. But this is going to be my explanation of why you should play Borderlands 1 in 2024. This is also going to be a sneaky little way of me making a Let's Play series of Borderlands 1. So we're going to be playing through the whole game here. Uh, but in cut up clips where I have just selected the, my favorite points of being a badass hunter. Uh, my goal here is just to make myself look like the best Borderlands 1 player ever, honestly. I mean, that's just what I'm here to do. Uh, but I'm also trying to sell you the game. I'm trying to make you play Borderlands 1 uh, Enhanced Edition today because it is amazing it has very nice graphics the borderlands show is coming up borderlands 4 has been talked about might as well play borderlands 1 if you haven't played it before maybe you've already played it go ahead play it again we all know why we love this game and that is because our lovely friend clop trap here is absolutely in no ways absolutely annoying absolutely do we not want to blow his brains out uh, but our friend Top Chef here is the uh, absolutely best character in the game. He carries the entire game, guys. Uh, and he's the main reason why I say you should play Borderlands 1 in 2024. Because if you don't play Borderlands 1, if you just played Borderlands 2 or 3, you would never understand why Clap Trap is the absolutely best favorite character of everybody and nobody at all finds him annoying. Not at all. Uh, but as you can see here, we are just working through the starting mission here, that is what this is here. Uh, bandit thug, we are attacked the bandit thug, we shoot the bandit thug, it has died. So, uh, the next thing we're going to do is activate a loot box, that's pretty much the basics of this game. These are one of the highest rarity boxes, there are higher rarity boxes actually, uh, but these are one of the highest. I think this might be the highest in Borderlands 1, but 2 and 3 there are different types of boxes, there are like... Could be really, really good boxes, but could not be RNG-based sort of thing. That's how this game works. It's an RNG-based looter shooter. It plays great in 2024 because they released Enhanced Edition, which means it plays on the latest computer, it plays on the latest console, it plays on everything. Anybody can play this game, so why not go play this game? It's probably dirt cheap, no matter where you are on platform-wise. PlayStation, Xbox, whatever, look up the code, see how much the code is on a code website, and you'll have a game for a little bit cheap. Or, if you really want to look it up, uh, look up how to get your game for free, because there is technically a way to get this game for absolutely free for the new Steam. But, we're not going to cover that, because that is that sounds like something I should not cover on my channel. But as you can see here, we are absolutely annihilating through this game. As I have said, I have played this game for a very, very long time. I've played it for years. I have played through this game many, many playthroughs, all sorts of different playthroughs. I have played all sorts of things on this game. So, I figured I'd show you how I would begin to get to level 10 within a 20-minute video. So, 20 minutes from now, you will see how to get to level 10 in Borderlands 1. That is uh, part of the plan of this video i don't really know uh if this is meant to be a guide or a convincing of why you should play this game but as you can see here this here is the first guy you encounter when playing borderlands one enhanced edition if you never played it before doctor said he's he's a bit of a quaint kind of a weird doctor i would really say uh, but as you can see here, the first mission he has given us is to kill Skags. Skags killed, 0 out of 5. So, in order to kill Skags, all we have to do is go up to this main gate. Or so you would think. However, the plot carrier of this game here, he, you have to speak to him in order for the gate to open. And all he does is holler, like he was earlier. I'm over here. I'm over here. Why does he do this? Nobody may know. But... That is just the way in the life of the Borderlands 1. That is just how it is being a Borderlands 1 player. But as you see here, absolutely annoying the bandit slugs. The bandit thugs have attacked us and uh, the claptrap unit. And we are now defending ourselves. Uh, and as you can see here, boom, headshot. 
boom, headshot. Boom, headshot, critical. I mean, what's not to love about this game, guys? Even though it's not the latest Borderlands, who needs the latest Borderlands? Have you even played the other Borderlands games? And you call yourself a true Borderlands fan. There's another reason to play Borderlands in 2024. Borderlands 1, that is, Enhanced Edition. You played Borderlands 3. Okay. Did you play 2? Did you play 1? Did you play the pre-sequel? That's another one to talk about. Most people don't even think about. The pre-sequel. People probably didn't even play the pre-sequel. But, aside from that, as you see, scan to the gate. Fix your upper. We're gonna go ahead and start this. We gotta go get a power coupling. So let's go ahead and get our way on over to the power coupling area. After staring at Dr. Dead for a minute, just so we can hear, uh, you know all you need to know, as he said. We know all we need to know. On, let's go get our power coupling. We got a power coupling, but we might as well kill ourselves some, uh, pup skags while we're at it. Right here right now. Bam, bam. Bam, 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 bam. And look at that. That's just how you kill them. Super duper quickly. Somehow this is a 20 minute video, but I mean, it takes me like, boom, one second, enemy dead. Boom, one second. Somehow this is a 20 minute video. I don't even know how this is a 20 minute video. I edited this. This was originally two hours worth of content here. And I have a 20 minute video. But as you can see here, all we are doing here is killing the pup skags here. Uh, then we are going to be heading back into the little town area where we'll be reinstalling the uh, power couplings and purchasing a shield. We just purchased a random shield because I don't care about the shield right now. Uh, and you can sort of take this video as maybe like a guide to how the best way to start Borderlands 1 and get to level 10. But this is also a playthrough so we will be going all the way to the end of the game. Two parts. This is part 1 of you should play Borderlands 1 in 2024. But as you can see here, boom, heads up. Just wonderful. These are all just R rating guns. Imagine when you get to the exotics or the legendaries and things like that. So it's all sorts of different guns. They have all sorts of different perks. So we will be taking a look at one of those here in the video. Actually, two of those are very good guns here in the video. As you can see, we're now level 3. Super, super easy. All we are doing is going through as a sniper build. The thing about the class system in Borderlands 1 is that every single character has a specific preferred weapon system that it likes to use however they all can level up efficiency on all types of weapons so technically if you max efficiency on a type of weapon other than preferred you will still be able to do as much damage as you want so you're not technically limited to using just one type of weapon on or one hand set of weapons based upon your class however preferred means that they will be getting the bonus stats compared to other weapons so you probably should be using your preferred weapons for my hunter for instance my mordecai here his preference is a pistol a revolver or a sniper rifle and that's pretty much it however rocket launchers will always work because they do an absurd amount of damage so now all we have to do is go meet this here man named tk baja he points his shotgun at us and says uh -huh, you should have seen the look on your face man and um that's that's tk baja for you, you know Alrighty, and now we are going to go ahead and begin the side quest for the TK Baja. That is the wonderful thing about this game is as you were playing the game, even if you do a side quest, all you gotta do is retrieve the stolen food, which are out of form. I'm not sure if this was a side quest or a mandatory quest, but regardless, all you gotta do is go down in here to this valley and collect all these your meats. You don't technically even have to kill the skags, but however we are going to kill the skags because it makes the game a lot easier. As well as just being a level based game, that is the main thing about Borderlands, is the more enemies that you kill, the stronger you will get. So, if you go around avoiding killing enemies, you might have a harder time doing other levels. If you avoid doing side quests, you might have a hard time. And in Borderlands 1, there are so many side quests that you are able to do, and go to one area and do three or four side quests, knock them all out, get them all check marked out, and then turn them in all at once for a really quick level boost, it is absolutely absurd. So, as you can see here now, we have just unlocked the Marcus Ammunition Vendor. That's how this game goes. It slowly unlocks new areas. It takes all different areas. It gives you new weapons. It gives you all sorts of stuff. Eventually, you find out about the legendary weapons. You find out about the, uh, there's these weapons in this game that are not in Borderlands 1 either. 
Uh, and their weapons are only binary code in, in name of the weapons, but they have a weird alien artifacty effect to it. If you play Borderlands 3, they got a little more into the alien artifacts and stuff a lot more in Borderlands 3 than they did in the original Borderlands 1. And even 2, really. We didn't really hear much about the alien artifacts in Borderlands that much. However, at least alien artifacts were official weapons in the Borderlands 1 video game. So, that is something to know about. Pre-sequel did have mention of the alien artifacts. 2 wasn't too heavy on it. 3 was very heavy on the alien artifacts. But I think we have gotten a bit askew. This is supposed to be a why you should play Borderlands 1 in 2024. Look at that skag. Doesn't make you want to download this game right now. Anyway, so back to trying to convince you to play this game. We're going to continue on into the next part. This is going to be a way to collect three individual side quests all at once. So consider this a guide. Consider this a playthrough. Consider this the best way to clear through Borderlands 1. Uh, absolutely amazingly quick. So what we are doing here actually is just going ahead and running through the barricade destroyed. Gun stash found and the 9 to kill part. So... All you have to do is kill the skags through here. You're going to have to battle your way through this here area. Uh, we already did that, so we are here on the boss man here himself. Nine toes. Uh, I don't know if I explained this to you yet, but we found out that the gearbox has boldly decided to give us a really good weapon of a pistol for the hunter and a rocket launcher that shoots multiple projectiles for one bullet cost. So, this is going to be how we are going to handle the bonehead, and you will be seeing that in just a second. Uh, this is why I say you should play this in 2024, because even if you have played this previously, you will not experience Borderlands 1 the same way as you experience this right now with this enhanced edition. And being that there is a TV show coming out, there is a very good chance that they will start from the beginning. And what is the beginning of the Borderlands? But, of course... The Borderlands 1. Borderlands 1. So, one of the things of most Borderlands games is that there are certain save points in the game. Being that if you exit the game after you complete your quest, you will instantly spawn at the beginning of the map, allowing you to fast travel back to the previous map, giving you a time save of about 3 minutes. I used to try and speed run the Borderlands games from 1 to 2 before we had any sort of updates to where they give us OP guns or things like that. I'm sure speedruns are quicker now for the non-glitch runs because there are speedruns where they're like three hours, but what they did was like glitch through areas to skip bosses and things like that instead of trying to figure out a way of becoming so OP so quickly that you are able to speedrun the game while playing the game. That is how I've always played the Borderlands. Because with the Borderlands, you will constantly be receiving new guns. You will constantly be receiving new shields. You will constantly be receiving new upgrade perks where you'll unlock new perks to your stuff. But you'll do sorts of different stuff and you'll become more OP and more OP and more OP. And it's just a constant rampage of killing, killing shit. That's what the Borderlands is in essence. And it is so beautiful to play a game like this, it's so simple, all you do is you point your gun, and you kill shit, and you click the quest buttons, and it tells you to go kill shit, and you go kill the shit, and you collect the shit it tells you to go get, and it gives you shit back, and that is the essence of dopamine release from the Borderlands 1. As I have said, this is why you should play the Borderlands 1 in the 2024, as you see her. You go down, but it's okay, because as long as you can kill somebody, as long as you kill somebody, you are right back up. You did not die in the beginning in the first place. You can just kill them. But as you can see here, we collected this little holotape right at the beginning of the map, and it allowed us to collect two more holotapes, which then turned into a quest completion, which would give us some free XP. We are then able to pursue the other quest objectives in this same map area without turning that quest in, hanging onto it, to where we found Scar just around the corner of where that second holotape was located, allowing us to take this OP rocket launcher, as you can see here, that just shoots multiple projectiles, and then we ended up shooting to our sniper, and we were easily able to kill Scar 
super duper easily with the provided resources. This was our level 5 sniper we got from the chest. I have shown multiple chest locations in this video. Of where there are nice chests, there are also the golden keys you can use. I have 70 currently. I would not recommend using golden keys till after level 10. As a matter of fact, in the next video at level 10, we will be using 5 golden keys to begin our adventure from level 10 plus. However, that is not this video, so let us continue on it here. So, as you can see here, here is another chest just after the Scar Battle. We have also selected the Blade Flower Seeds. It is always best to just go ahead and collect any quests you see available, just so that they are currently active, so that you are able to complete them if you happen to stumble upon the items you need. Uh, the Blade Flower Seeds quest is a speedrun so much that I am just going to show you the entire thing a little bit sped up here. As you can see, you can literally just run through this entire thing. Sure, stags will chase you all the way through. However, it is a super duper easy way of getting a lot of XP without having to kill any enemies the quickest way possible. I believe in real time this takes you about 3 minutes to collect all 8 of the blade flower seeds. But it is super duper helpful because it gives you a whole lot of XP. It will get you a lot closer to your level 10 goal. A lot quicker, we actually need to be about level 12 to 15 before we are ready for the next actual beginning of the game. Then basically, this is going to be chapter 1 of Borderlands 1. We are going to be covering this in, I guess, in stuff parts, we might even name them chapters. But as you can see here, we have collected some more quests from the TK Baja, and we are going to run over to the Bonehead Killed and the District Magical. And we're going to take this OP here rocket launcher that they give you for free at the very start of the game that has no actual level. And we're going to use it to absolutely obliterate Bonehead. As I said previously, when you shoot one bullet from this gun, it shoots multiple shots off, doing a decent amount of damage. So we are able to nuke the Bonehead boss, even though we are only level 9. And he is level 12. We were able to nuke the boss with a single rocket launcher that was gifted to us at the beginning of the game. That is why I am saying once again that you should play the Borderlands 1 Enhanced Edition in 2024. As for my Seder selection, I am not sure it is the Seder selection that will be used in the second chapter of this game. Just due to the fact that it seems to darken the game a whole bunch and I don't like the darkness effect too much. I would like to see a more vibrant version of this. So we will be tuning our shaders just so you know I have shaders installed here to add a more 2024 lighting effect which I suggest any PC player to do. It doesn't cost much performance. This is a pretty old game even if it is enhanced. It still doesn't require that much really to run. Uh, but as I was saying, we are continuing to the quest here. We are going to be on to another set of quests where you can complete three different quests here, including one being the main objective quest, all very quickly. We just did the scooter quest, which required us to kill Bonehead, which I just showed you you can nuke with the free rocket launcher they give you from just playing the game now, because Gearbox is cool like that when you play the enhanced version of this game. They give you a rocket launcher and a repeater pistol. How wild. I guess I want you to be able to get through the less new content easier so that you can play the new content faster because originally these games used to take a lot longer to complete but due to all the extra stuff they have added to this game and just how the game flows now it is a lot faster paced than it used to be uh, at least when it comes to those two free exotics it's not that big of a deal but at the same time, it is a heck of a deal at the same time, because it allows you to nuke some stuff. So, this here is the Rack Hive, a uh, little side quest, let's get the flock out of here or something like that. Rack killed are out of 10, you can literally just take your little uh, vehicle here and just shoot at the racks and drive up and down the hill after you shoot their nest. And instantly kill them, and you'll be able to get 10 Rack kills super duper quickly here. Technically, you can get out of your vehicle here, uh, and when you do a non-vehicle kill, it will be giving you more XP than a vehicle kill, because a vehicle kill is not considered as much skill, so you will not be getting as much XP, just a side note here. Uh, if you did want to get out of your vehicle here and actually kill them by hand, you very much could, and you probably would be able to get to more like level 10 or, or more like a level 11. 
by killing the racks through that way. However, it is the quickest method to kill them through the vehicle, and it will still give you the same amount of XP. As you can see here, breaking wind is literally 3,000 XP, and all you have to do is run up to these turbines using your vehicle, drive up to them, hop out, push a button, hop back in your vehicle, hop in your vehicle, turn them in, and you're good. Now, here's the thing. The sledge mine key is actually very close located to these turbines here. So, my usual plan after activating the second turbine is to just run straight into this here building and uh, collect this here uh, quest here. And all you have to do is turn in to in order to enable this quest and turn it in. And it turns in multiple times and gives you XP multiple times. Uh, is to just literally click a piece of paper and then just on to the next quest. Now all we have to do is activate break C and we just did that. And we're just going to go ahead and save and exit. Just will start us a bit behind. This is not the best way. We did have to drive back over here. It would slow us down if we were doing a speed run. But those are all the side quests turned in. I do believe this is going to be about the end of the video of why you should play Borderlands in 2024 part 1 of my playthrough of Borderlands 1. But I'm out. See you. Keep up. It's more.